Oh, wow. I see a perfect plate. It's obviously executed by some sort of world-class chef. Wow. The smell is just so good. I just want to dig right into this dish. If you've ever wondered what a world-class dish is like, you're looking at one. A seasonal and savory wild boar entree created by one of this country's finest chefs, Michael Bonaccini. Oh. <laughs> oh, cool. Oh my gosh, I'm getting it for free. That's awesome. Smells good, doesn't it? And I'm sure you want to know what it tastes like. So grab a fork and dig in. Mmm, mm, so juicy, so decadent. I could eat this whole thing. This puree is so smooth, it just melts in your mouth. That's really good. I'm a vegetarian, but even I know that this meat has a perfect sear on it. Now, we want you all to make your own world-class entree. So, you're gonna have to learn how to master a few techniques. The perfect sear, a velvety smooth puree, and restaurant quality plating. And I'm gonna demonstrate those techniques for you right now. Please come up to the front. We're gonna get a demonstration from Chef Michael. It's amazing. A ringside seat. <laughs> mm -hmm. Awesome. This is such a treat. Chef Michael Bonaccini is teaching me how to cook. Incredible. Presentation side goes down first because that's the nice clean pan. If you overheat the pan, you'll have a very leathery crust to the meat. You want to be hot enough to sear it, but not so hot that you end up scorching it or drying it out. Very, very important. We'll finish it off in the oven. All his movements are calculated. Everything has a thought process behind it, and it's just so cool to see him cook. To make the parsnip puree, very simple. In the pot, I have vegetable stock, cream. Once it's cooked, we add to our blender. I have never made a puree before. He makes it look so easy, but I'm aware how hard all these techniques are. Work that through, making sure that there are no lumps, no unpulverized pieces of that beautiful puree. Plating. So the first thing to go down will be the puree, which you can see how smooth that is. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous beluga lentils. There will be a little bit of negative space on either side, but for me, that provides balance. Cut the chop. So now we're exposing the beautiful cook on that meat. Mm -hmm. Food has to look beautiful on a plate from a chef's perspective, but it has to make sense for the guest who has to eat it. I think I'm a good plater already, but after seeing his thought process behind plating, it's life-changing. Everything has a purpose. Done. Now it's time to go back to your stations. That is really, really, really awesome. That's all I can give you, baby. Thank you, that's fine. I should breeze through this because I have the easiest cut out of everybody. Hello, Chef. Tail. So Eric gave you the plum cut. Tell me how you're cooking it. I made my own spice mixture here. You did? What's in the spice mix? Salt, black pepper, white pepper, garlic powder, uh, rosemary, and thyme. Fairly generic. Uh, it's, it's very generic, but I don't like to mess with meat. So I like to actually taste the flavor of meat and just enhance it a little bit. And the cooked degree? I am hoping for medium rare. You're hoping for medium rare. I'm hoping for medium rare. And what's in the pan? Um, it's going to be red wine braised leeks. Good luck with it and watch Thank the you. time. Thank you so much. Keep Chef. an eye on that chop. Dale, you're up next. The dish today is spiced tomahawk steak with parsnip stuffed leeks and tricolor french fries. Dale, you told me you were going to cook this medium rare. This is raw. It is blue raw. It registered 127 in three different places. I don't care what it registered. There's nothing magical here. There's no sauce to dip the steak in. There's no jus. It's, it's uninspiring. First of all, don't argue. Yes, sir. Nobody eats ribeye this thick, rare. Your ice cream should be in there by now, so it'll freeze up solid. I've made sponge cake a few times, so I am feeling pretty good. OK, guys, that sponge cake needs to be in the oven. Go, 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 get it in there. 
I'm a little bit worried. Maybe this won't bake in time. I'm mixing the batter and I start folding in flour. Julie? Hi. Baked Alaska challenge, gotta be the toughest yet. Are you confident that you can pull all that off? Yeah. Looks like the flour is a little undermixed there. I would take that out with a spoon so you don't get that uh, raw flour flavor. Thank you. I think Julie is having a meltdown. I just came off Julie's station. She was taking her Genovese sponge, pouring it into the sheet pan, and the flour that is in there that is unmixed, I said to her, take it out, remix it so it mixes through nicely. She didn't take that advice. She just takes her spatula and mixes it through, throws it into the oven. If we find uncooked flour in that sponge cake, it could be the end. Why wouldn't you take your advice at this stage of the game? Hi, Julie. Hi. Do you think you honored a classic? I did. Some nice layers happening here. Sponge cake right in the bottom. It looks a little grainy. Mm. Did you incorporate all the flour? I tried to. Because it looks like there's raw flour in here. Wow. I've never seen a baked Alaska with raw flour. That might be very costly for you. Yes, I know that. Julie. Hi. Looks like the loading of the meringue got a little carried away there, huh? Yeah. Good success on the ice cream, though, by the looks of it. I had mentioned to you about the yes, you did. flour in the sponge. Listen, the texture of the meringue is good, the ice cream is good. Not listening to Chef Michael could send me home. But you can see the focus on Becky's face. She's only 19, and that makes her the youngest home cook we've ever had in this kitchen. Remind me of your signature ingredient, Becky. Uh, beetroot. It has a monochromatic look that feels modern. And how did you wish to cook the tenderloin? Medium rare, hopefully. Very nice. The beets, you have respected and elevated their flavors. Seasoned well, but we have a problem here. The problem is that there's one less apron to fight for. This is your express pass to the top 12. I'm so excited to get a white apron. Good job, Becky. I see the judges walking towards me, and all I am thinking is, don't cry, don't cry, <laughs> don't pass out. <laughs> Sienna? Hi. You're looking very nervous. Tell me about your dish. I made a lobster bisque. I made my own stock and made a roux, and we made it with love, and sorry, I'm trying not to be the first person to pee on national TV. I'm so nervous. <laughs> I'm glad you told me that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's now time to try your salmon coulibiax. How are you feeling about things? Feeling great. No regrets at virtually volunteering to be in this pressure test? <laughs> uh, absolutely not. One more chance for me to present food to the three of you. Happy with the outcome? Yeah, I'm very happy with the outcome. Not only do I want to see perfectly cooked salmon, but I want to see six distinctive layers. Do you think you've been able to achieve that? I think so, Chef. You ready to take a look? What do you think? Awesome. I like it. Awesome is not the word that I would probably use. I would have liked the pastry just more tightly wrapped around that salmon, so there's less of a space between where the salmon ends and the pastry starts. And did you season every layer, Michael? I did. You know, it's not perfect, that's for sure. Pastry a tad undercooked, salmon just a little over. You have to give this a lot of thought. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Chef. Yes, Chef. How are you doing? I'm excited for this one. It's time for me to redeem myself. Why do you feel you have to redeem yourself? I keep getting pulled off because they think I'm the weakest link. It's time for me to tell them, guess what? I'm not as weak as you think I am. So what kind of pizza are you making? Peach, some um, 
pancetta for some saltiness, and then uh, fresh mint and basil. So is that a dessert type pizza? It sort of straddles between? It straddles between. The key is to find that right balance, right? Exactly. You think you can pull that off? I can pull that off. The second home cook that we'd like to call up, come on, feels that they have something to prove in this competition. I am positive they're gonna call my name. The pizza that we want to see belongs to... Jennifer. I did what I call summer fresh, and it's peaches, pancetta, balsamic glaze, walnuts, and a little bit of basil and mint. The balance, the bacon, cheese, peach. Not only can you cook, you can cook with style. balance of sweet and savory, you manage to make it work. And that is not easy. And if I could give any of you other home cooks a little advice, that would be not to underestimate Jennifer. That is an amazing pizza. Well done. This is the big turning point for me in this competition. Now my competitors can see what I'm really capable of. I'm gonna show you the preparation and presentation for each appetizer and entree that you're gonna be responsible for. First up is Canoe's signature crab and tuna salad with taro chips, black radish, and pickled strawberries. I've got Dungeness crab, beautiful diced fresh tuna. See how that's nicely cubed? Everyone equal. Watching Chef Michael make his dishes is just like watching magic happening. Everything just falls perfectly on the plates. These are gorgeous Ontario preserved strawberries. It's like Chef Michael is making a piece of art in front of our eyes. I wouldn't even have to eat it and I'd be satisfied paying for it. I want everyone looking like that when it comes out. You got it? Yes, yes, chef. yes chef. The second appetizer is a twist on a traditional French onion soup. Here I've got this beautiful, rich game stock and these gorgeous onions from the Holland Marsh, all stewed up, nicely cooked down. This is Thunder Oak cheese. Bone marrow, absolutely beautiful. And there we are. Piping hot onion soup. Next up are the two main dishes, PEI potato beef with duck confit potatoes and collard greens, and seared ivory salmon with squash and beluga lentils. And I want the salmon to be cooked nice and pink on the inside. I'm watching Chef Michael like a hawk. These are extremely complicated dishes. PEI potato beef. This one is medium. It's all about the cooking of the beef. Feel how firm that is? The softer it is to the touch indicates that it's medium rare. See the wonderful glaze, the thickness, the richness of that? Each one of these plates has somewhere between six and nine components. I'm freaking out, man. I hope you all paid close attention to Michael's instructions because in one hour, 60 of Michael's most valued customers will be seated in Canoe's dining room, expecting the exquisite food that this restaurant is known for. During service, I'll be right here expediting. If I don't think a dish is absolutely perfect, I'll be asking you to do it over. Yes, Chef! How much time on the marrow, Michael? Bone marrow. Thank you. Lynn, you gotta slow it down because Sabrina is not keeping up with you on the tuna. You're gonna get too far ahead, and I'm gonna have soup sitting up here, and it's gonna get cold. Yes, Chef. Same for you guys in the blue team, okay? The food has to come up pretty much together. We need a little bit of uh, wasabi oil to finish this. Yes. And then I think we're good to go. Two crab up. You season the tuna? Yes. yes, Chef. Okay, did you taste it? I did not, Chef. You gotta make sure, because you'd be surprised at how much salt okay. it can handle. So we got two crab and two soup. All right, your first check is out there, blue team. Keep it up. Soup up. All right, service, here we go. Table two, one soup, one crab. But just after the first orders go out, Claudio is alerted to a problem. French onion soup. I felt it was lukewarm. Let me make it up to you. I'll be right back. OK. Michael, person who had the soup, thought it was cold. Which table? Table three. Blue team. We need it on the fly. I can't believe a soup comes back. Let's get a brand new soup 911 right now, OK? Got to come out piping hot. Canoe doesn't do plates going back to the kitchen. Come on, guys, come on, come on, come on. Go, You're killing go, me go, here. Go, 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 go. That's good and hot? I just took it All off. All right, thank you. 
Red team, listen up. We've got two tables that haven't had their main courses yet. Yes, chef. Four steaks is what I'm waiting for. Yes, chef. And it's taking too long. Yes, chef. Lynn, push your team there. Come on, get guys, we're almost up. done. We can do this. Michael, if you need to get back there, let me know. I'll call the pass for you. OK, you get there. Get a pan on here. I want to get a pan hot. Oil, butter. Let's go. Watch your lentils at the back there, huh? I am so embarrassed that Chef Michael has to come back and bail us out. OK, are the plates ready? Yes, Chef. Watching Chef Michael is making me realize I got a long way to go. Let's get that one cutting on the plates. Put it down. Put it down. Add a boy. OK, let's go. Four steaks. Okay. Get them up. Red team, your last order is out. You're done. Being in a professional kitchen is more intense than I ever imagined. I have a newfound respect for those $50 dishes I've been ordering. The ingredient, Cody chose. Truffles. <sighs> Damn it, truffles. Damn it. I've never seen one. I've never tasted one. I've never cooked with one. Eric, thank you so much for joining us. You're an inspiration to every home cook in this kitchen. It's a pleasure to be here. And good luck, everyone. At first glance, truffles are mystifying. I think they can be intimidating. You have to understand how powerful and pungent they can be. Very tricky ingredient to work with. I have no clue about truffles. They could have said, Lynn, you're cooking with the moon. Same difference. Lynn, I mean, she seems like she's in trouble. Her nerves are fraying big time. <sighs> hey, Lynn, what's wrong? I've never had truffles before. So right now, I'm just, I don't know if I'm going in the right direction or not, but I'm going by the taste that I like. That you smelled it? it? Smells like? Like the woods. Earthy. Yes. Think of it just as a really big, flavorful mushroom. And think of the kind of ingredients it would go with, OK? Thank you. I think you, I think you can get back on track with that. Thank you. Lynn, please bring your dish to the front. I don't know if this is good enough or if this is going to send me home. Filet mignon with a truffle, goat cheese, compound butter. The puree on the bottom is beautiful and smooth. That celery root really comes through well. And the amount of truffle that you put in, I think, was just the right amount. Thank you, Chef. It was enough to stand up to the heft of the beef. It's quite impressive. Thank you. Chef Michael will now demonstrate the two appetizers and two entrees the home cooks will be making. The first appetizer that I'm going to show you is a duck consommé en croûte. In goes this rich broth. It's made from the bones of roasted duck legs. We're going to be adding foraged mushrooms, some cinnamon caps, duck leg dumplings. Watching Chef Michael is like watching a mystical creature. A little diced mirepoix of vegetables. It's like he's a kitchen unicorn. Then you have to make sure you get a good seal. Once that's cooked, out it goes. The second appetizer I'm going to show you is a artichoke barrigoule salad. Here I have some grilled artichokes. We're just going to give these a little toss in a light lemon vinaigrette, olive oil. We start to build our dish. There's a lot of components in this salad. A little sprinkle of fleur de sel. This is a difficult dish to assemble. And that is salad parigule of artichoke. The first entree that I'm going to show you is our beef dish. A good amount of salt, pepper, and into a pan. And you're going to have to work that pan on the stove and get a good sear on it. Chef Michael's standards are the highest of the high. There is no room for error. If I can have every steak go out like that tonight, I'll sleep well. Oxtail stuffed onions, carrots, and the sauce. And that is our beef tenderloin. The second entree I'm going to show you is our monkfish. This is a beautiful fish. We wrap that in bayon ham. So into a pan with a little olive oil and butter. There's so many different components. I had no idea that this would be so hard. I'm freaking out a little. Take a little of our sauce. And there we have our second entree. 
I won't send out appetizers or main courses until everything is at the pass to go. And if it sits too long, it gets redone. Do not let me down. Hey, chef. Good luck. Et bonne chance. Let's go, Red. I need more artichokes. Red team, two salad, two consomme. Two more salad, two more consomme. When the orders start coming in, I'm listening to Chef Michael, but I'm waiting for Barry to call the name. Red team, new order in. One artichoke salad and three consomme. Can I get a yes on that? Yes, chef. Thank you, Trevor. Are you the team captain? Barry, yes, chef. Him. Yes, chef. Thank you. Barry, two of those salads ASAP. Working on it. I can't believe how hard it is to keep track of what goes with what. Come on, Barry. The artichoke salads that I need them right now. What is going on? I'm overwhelmed at this point. Barry, new team. Four more fillets, all medium rare, and two monkfish. Two fillets, both medium rare, and two monkfish. This is freaking intense. Immediately, we're frazzled. How far out are you, Aaron? Uh, where did my ladle go? Hey, blue team, I need some food up here, please. How long out on those first order of steaks, Trevor? Give me one minute. You got one minute, exactly. Come on, guys, you're gonna have to focus now. Coming out right now. That's medium. That's not medium. That's rare. I need a medium steak, and I need it now. The hardest thing about the beef dish is definitely nailing the cook on the beef having a hard time gauging it just by touching the outside. Red Team, what's holding things up? Undercooked steak, Chef. Come on, Red Team, I need this order. Yes, Chef! We do not want Chef Michael coming into the Red Kitchen. If that happens, we're done. Dine on a medium steak. While Trevor is struggling with undercooked steak, over in the Blue Kitchen... Watch that pan, it's looking a little too hot for my liking. Aaron seems to have the opposite problem. I want it seared, not burnt. Regulating the temperature on these induction burners, it's a juggling act. I do not want to get back in there, OK? Yes, Chef. Take him off the pan if you feel like they're going to burn. Yeah, hold on. I've never seen Aaron look so stressed ever. Watch your pan again there, Aaron. Look at it, it's smoking. Aaron, do you need help? What? Do you want me to get on some steaks? No. Aaron. Yes, Chef. Look at all that smoke. This one is, is burnt. You can't serve a steak that is black on the edges like that. That's a waste of good steak. I'm feeling like we're drowning. I've lost four steaks, and I'm going to have to refire. Don't let that happen again. Yes, Chef. This isn't the time to panic. It's time for us to rise to the occasion. Sorry I'm letting you down on these steaks. It's OK, Aaron. Let's just pick it up. Hey, Michael, Michael, they order medium. And look at that. Barry, give me. This was medium. What color is that? That's rare. OK, I'll fix it right away. Fix it medium. Make sure it doesn't happen again. Yes, Chef. Yes, Chef. If a steak comes back and it's undercut, this is my fault. Come on, Trevor, I need that recooked steak. Just let it rest. It's coming right out, Chef. Give me one minute here. If I can't figure out the dumbest of these steaks, we're going to lose this challenge, and I'm going to be the cause. Hi there, home cooks. Come on in. You're looking pretty good in your chef's whites. Standing in Lenya with the chef whites on feels really like, is this allowed? Like, who's letting me do this? So the first appetizer I'm going to show you is the broken avocado salad. Avocado has to be beautifully ripe, cut into quarters, and then a good squirt of lime juice. White beans braised down in a vegetable broth. Little sticks of jicama. Next, a little kohlrabi. Chayote squash. A little sherry vinaigrette. Just give that all a good little toss. It's just so smooth for him, but for me, it's like, OK, like, wow, step six, step seven. Blood orange. There is nothing more I love in life than some beautiful jamon. The broken avocado salad, showcasing great ingredients and great care and attention. It looks like art. It's beautiful. The second appetizer I'll be showing you is going to be clams and chorizo. A taste of home. A little bit. I feel like I'm in my mom's kitchen. I'm Portuguese. This is what we eat. And it all starts off with slivered garlic and oil and some flavorful chorizo. These are called savory clams. They cook quite quickly. A little splash of diced tomato, adding that sweet note. Whilst the clams are cooking, onto the beautiful calamari. Chef Michael looks like he's been doing this since birth. I want that calamari to cook instantaneously in a cast iron pan, just like that. Taste as you go, remember, home cooks. Taste as you go. A little drizzle of finishing oil. Simple, clean presentation. Look at that. Clams and chorizo. 
Oh, I want to eat every single plate. The first entree I'll be showing you is the Atlantic salmon with chickpeas. Beautiful center cut salmon, skin side down. Hear that sizzle? That's what I want to hear. And it should be done to a just blushing pink on the inside. Being from Saskatchewan and not eating a lot of fish, for me, that just terrifies me. These gorgeous dried chickpeas braised out. And I want that sauce listening. Plating this dish for this salmon, I want the skin side up. Then drizzle of the oil. One Atlantic salmon entree. Second entree is a roasted lamb sirloin. I want to get a good sear on this. Once this has got a nice sear and coated like this, into the oven it goes. Three to four minutes. This is the cook I want. Medium rare, heading towards medium. Chef Michael's standards are sky high. They're out of this universe. Clean, tight, compact presentation. Roasted lamb sirloin. Plenia's menu is just such an adventure, and I just want to make sure that it's still a really pleasant adventure when we're the ones making it. This is kind of scary. Nothing less than perfect will leave this kitchen. Is that understood? Yes, yes Chef. The judges, they're driving home expectations. You know, it's almost like a coach right now. The game's about to start, running out of the tunnel of a football game. Your heart feels like it's gonna jump out of your chest. Blue team, the two salmon, four lamb. Chef, how many lamb all day? Nine. Nine. I need one right now to go with this salmon. If it's not here in a minute, I'll be sending this salmon back. It is almost impossible to get the timing right on the big tables that have a mix of both the salmon and the lamb. Guys, I need it in two minutes or we have to reset the whole thing. No, it's coming. Red team. Yes. Four lamb, new order, okay? Was that a yes? Yes, Chef. Yes, Thank yes, you. Chef. The tickets just never stop. You just feel like you're just constantly trying to dig your way out of this hole, uh, and the only place that you're going is down. In the past, two salmon, followed by two lamb, and one second, Chef. I need four lamb to go with these two. Oh. And then it's two lamb, two salmon after oh, that. Oh, you need four lamb, okay. Yes. Do you need another pan for lamb? Uh, yeah. How long on that salmon and that lamb? He needs to cook more lamb, so we're gonna be about eight minutes. Eight minutes? That's killing me. Red team. These are words you don't want to hear. You have over a 90-minute wait on one table. It's a 10-year-old girl. I spend a lifetime building this company, not to be destroyed in an afternoon. 90 minutes have gone by? This is a horror of a service. I'm sending my chef de cuisine, Julie, in to help. OK. Blue team, I'm sending Chef Julie to give you a hand so we can get these last few tables out. Yes, yeah, Chef. Guys, we got to get these final tables out. Let's go. OK, I'm going to go and jump in the red team, give them a hand. I need you to stay on the okay. path. All right, red team, we got to get this salmon out. I'm not going to let my customers down. You going in the oven with those? Yes, I am, Chef. That's a little dark on that That's a little dark. She's here because we suck. <laughs> For your first round, you'll be tackling something that is very close to my heart. And to help, we've invited somebody who is also very close to my heart. Please welcome my son, Chef Oscar Bonaccini. Oh. Hi, everyone. Chef Oscar Bonaccini. This is so cool. As a dad, I can only imagine how proud Chef Michael is to bring his son out onto the stage and just see what MasterChef Canada is all about. <laughs> It's not just take your son to work day. <laughs> Oscar is here to demonstrate the challenge that for Italians is all about family. Fresh pasta making. Oh. Yes. Some of my happiest memories come from making pasta with my dad and spending time in the kitchen together. It's probably the reason that I started to follow in his footsteps. As part of Oscar's culinary career, he spent four months in a small town in the heart of Emilia-Romagna, a region in the north known as the food capital of Italy, and also where the Bonaccini family has its roots. I was there to train at a renowned restaurant called Trattoria del Cacciatore, where a chef named Marta taught me everything that she knows about making fresh pasta. And if you've spent any time with an Italian Nona, you'll know that I have never worked so hard in my life. <laughs> Your third and final option is a recipe that was developed by my mentor and legendary chef, Anton Moziman. An exquisite sea scallop mousse. Replicating this silky seafood creation demands flawless technique, texture, and consistency. I can't emphasize how difficult this is to make. I tried many, many times and failed in the early years. Which of the home cooks do you think would have difficulty replicating any one of these dishes? I think Jennifer would have difficulty with all these dishes. It would be tricky for her. Who do you think would have less trouble? I think Christopher could knock these all out. Christopher is emerging as a real contender for you. Absolutely. 
So are you thinking when you come to strategy about the strongest competitors? Let's get the strong ones out. David, which one of our three master dishes are you going to choose for the other home cooks to replicate? The dish I choose is... My sea scallop mousse. What I'm looking for in the perfect sea scallop mousse is a balance of taste and texture. A light, delicate, fluffy mousse with a perfectly creamy texture to it. I don't get a mousse. Why would you do that to real food? Why don't you just throw it on the grill? Please come up to taste this dish you need to produce for the elimination challenge. I don't know mousse textures. I need to nail that taste. I've made a lot of mousses before. I know the general principles behind making it. You just gotta add some scallop now. I've never even made a dessert mousse, so I just hope I can make it look and taste exactly like Chef Michael's. Okay, thank you. It's time to step down to the front. What you're about to replicate is the dish that defined Michael's success. And today, it will define success or failure for each one of you. This is the first dish that Michael Bonaccini mastered. This has to be perfect. You have seven minutes to shop for everything you need in the pantry. Are you ready? Yes, yes chef. chef. Your time starts now. I am trying to make sure that I have all of the ingredients I'm pretty sure I need. Oh, he's alive. Oh my gosh. <laughs> White wine, fish stock, cream, good. Scallops, heavy cream. I'm walking out of the pantry and I realize as I see everybody's baskets, I forgot my eggs. The eggs are the critical component in a mousse. I can't make mousse if I don't have eggs. What's wrong with Jennifer? I need a minute. Without eggs, my mousse cannot bind together. This is the worst case scenario. Jennifer, what's going on? Oh, I'm just having a bit of a panic attack. I'll be okay. This is not a time now to give up hope. Nerves, pressure can get the best of anyone. It's coming up. Thank you. Oh. That's it. There you go. Keep an eye on the clock. Absolutely. And put out the absolutely best dish you could possibly put together. OK. That's all you can ask of yourself. Thanks, Chef. What's going on, Michael? Oh, boy. Jennifer has forgotten her eggs. Whoa. Jennifer, she's probably going to end up with scallop soup. Jennifer, please bring up your sea scallop mousse. At the beginning of this cook, you were in pieces. How are you feeling now? A lot better, and thank you for calming me down. I honestly didn't think I'd be able to recover from it. So you forgot your eggs? Yes, I did. What did you do? to turn this around? I kind of made a bit of a roux. I tried to incorporate that into the scallops when I was whipping it. I think it was a very ingenious idea, but will it deliver the lighter texture? Jennifer? It did work. Oh. It is surprisingly light, moist. I really don't get the taste of any of that starchiness from the roux. It is a tad more dense than I would have liked, but the seasoning is spot on. The lobster is delicious. A lesson to everyone in resourcefulness and creativity, because this, as a replication, that's amazing. Thank you. Please go back to your station. I don't think Jennifer's a threat to me in this competition. I do believe, however, that some people don't take her as seriously as they should. She just doesn't give up. Hey there, Aaron. Hello, Chef. Taking a look at your tagine, I like the size in which it's cut, so you can identify the vegetables that you've used. Give it a little taste there. Yes, Chef. Was that the taste profile that you were looking for? I was looking for it to be slightly sweeter. The clove has gotten a little more pronounced than I would have preferred it to be. It definitely has positive notes of Morocco. I like the choice of your vegetables. I think the harissa is good. I find that some of the spices, particularly the clove, gives a bitter aftertaste. It's a borderline unpleasant. Sometimes, Aaron, I think you've got to cook slightly simpler, slow things down. Do you think you can do that? Absolutely, Chef. I hope you have the chance to show us more. 
Thank you, Aaron. Thank you. I just let my dream slip between my fingers. Taya and Aaron, this was a really tough decision for us. We have said this many times. You're only as good as your last dish. And tonight, the worst tagine was made by... Aaron. Holy smokes. Aaron, you have the heart and soul of a chef, and all you lack is experience. And that's something that I'd love to give to you. Oliver and Bonaccini are opening up a new restaurant in Montreal next year, and it would be my honor to offer you a job in that kitchen. I would love to pursue your offer, chef. Well, come on up here and let's shake on it.